In the UK, you can generally hear birdsong all year. But what species you hear and how much you hear them singing will vary depending on the time of year and the hour of the day. Whether you live in the city or the countryside, there's usually a lovely chorus of birds to enjoy. It's easy just to sit back and allow their beautiful song to take you away to nature's paradise. More often than not, you hear birds, but you don't see them. Wouldn't it be amazing to hear their song and know the species? Even to know what the call means. Identifying birds is so much fun and is a great tool for helping wildlife. Hi everyone, welcome to Animal Educate. My name's Abby. Today we're going to be looking at the most common bird songs and calls you're most likely to hear in Britain and how to identify them. The UK has a large variety of bird life as it consists of many wintering and breeding sites for many different species. Birds that have been recorded in the wild state are on the British list. Some breed here in the millions while others they've only been here once or twice. The British list is maintained by the British Ornithologists' Union, the BOU. As of June 2021, the British list stands at 626 species. Birds that produce song are known as songbirds, and although many bird species across the world produce some sort of call or sound, fewer produce songs. The bird song is probably the most familiar sound to us because it's what we would find perhaps most appealing. They're tuneful vocalizations that can be made all throughout the day, but especially the morning. Songs are often sung by male birds or not limited to, and this is because they're attracting a mate or they're marking their territory. Bird calls and other noises, they're used more for specific communication. Short piercing calls are often used as an alarm and loud chirps they use to maintain contact with the flock and of course tweets from chicks demand parental attention and you have lots of other different sounds for communication during flight it's endless really birds make lots of different noises the dawn chorus is an intense period of bird song it starts roughly in march about an hour before sunrise, and this continues all the way through to July. It corresponds with the mating season. It's also not unusual to hear birdsong at night, especially from the robin. A report in 2020 on bird populations by the British Trust of Ornithology has revealed the UK's most common birds. It suggests that the wren has become the UK's most common bird with over 11 million pairs. In second place was the robin with over 7.35 million pairs. The third was the house sparrow with 5.3 million pairs. And then the wood pigeon, 5.15 million pairs. Then the chaffinch and blackbird with 5.05 million pairs each. I'm going to list some of the birds that you're more likely to hear in Britain, but it does depend on location, it depends on the abundance in that area, and I'm also going to list a few birds that are declining in population. It's a really good idea for you to be able to identify these birds, so you can document this, so you can record this for conservation efforts. The Wood Pigeon this is the UK's largest pigeon. It's mainly grey with a white neck patch and white wing patches. They're found across the UK in fields and woodland areas, but also in towns and cities, parks and gardens. They have a low pitched cooing with a five note structure. Alongside the song, you'll usually hear the loud clattering sound of its wings when it takes flight.
The chaffinch is one of the most widespread and abundant birds in Britain and Ireland. They can be seen across the UK in hedgerows, woodlands, parks and fields, and lots of gardens. They have a patterned plumage, and this helps them to blend in when feeding on the ground. When they fly, they reveal a flash of white on the wings. You'll usually hear chaffinches before you see them. They have a loud song and varied calls. The typical song of the male chaffinch consists of a descending rattle of musical notes. And this is followed by an accelerated ending. So listen out for the descending scale. They're known to repeat this enthusiastically. Although the song only lasts two to three seconds, it is repeated a lot. The Goldfinch The goldfinch is a highly coloured finch with a bright red face and a yellow wing patch. They're sociable, often breeding in loose colonies. In winter, many UK goldfinches migrate as far south as Spain. You'll find them near scattered bushes and trees, rough ground, and by thistles and other seedling plants. They're most common in southern England. The goldfinch has a liquid twittering song and call. It's often described as light, with a succession of notes that come out very fast. The Great Tit The largest UK tit. This bird is green and yellow with a glossy black head and white cheeks. They can be found in woodlands, parks and gardens across the UK. They are a woodland bird, but they've readily adapted to man-made habitats so have become familiar to gardens. They have an iconic high-pitched and squeaky song, which makes them quite easy to identify by sound. They alternate between two notes of different pitches. The magpie. The magpie has a black and white plumage and a long tail. Close up, they can take on a purplish blue sheen. You'll find magpies across England, Wales and Northern Ireland. They're more localized in Scotland. They're seen in a range of different habitats, from farmland to upland moors. They have a distinctive rattling call, which is quite abrasive. It's almost like a chattering. The Song Thrush. The Song Thrush is a very popular garden songbird, but their numbers have declined. It's smaller and browner than the missile thrush, with smaller spotting. It has warm brown upper parts, with a creamy yellow throat and breast with some speckles. This bird repeats song phrases, and their songs are easier to identify. They repeat each of their short phrases up to three times before moving on to a completely different one. Their notes are quite confident and powerful. The Collared Dove. Collared doves are a pale pinky brown grey colour. They have a distinctive black neck collar. They have deep red eyes. They can be seen just about anywhere, often around towns and villages, but they're common to gardens. If there's a lot of food available, you may see a flock, but more commonly they're seen in pairs or on their own. Their monotonous cooing will be familiar to most, it's similar to the sound of a wood pigeon, but it's a lot more persistent. The Robin. The UK's favourite bird, with its bright red breast. You'll see the Robin all year round, especially at Christmas, but more so on Christmas cards. Robins sing nearly all year round. Don't let their cute appearance fool you. They're aggressively territorial, and they're quick to drive away intruders. Robins live across the UK in hedgerows, woodlands, gardens and parks. You'll often hear them at night. 
They also sing through the winter when other species fall silent. So this is a good time to listen out for them. And this will make it easier for you to identify them by their sounds. They have a delicate song with warbling notes. You'll also hear whistles and clear pauses. They'll sound a lot clearer and powerful in the spring and summer. Whereas in the winter, they sound more mournful. You're also likely to hear them making a tick sound. The blackbird. The male blackbird is black, whereas the females are brown, often with spots and streaks. The bright orange-yellow beak and eye ring make an adult male blackbird very striking. Blackbirds are found everywhere across the countryside, in gardens, you'll find them on coasts and hills. They have a mellow song. It's low-pitched and flute-like. The songs of the blackbird and the song thrush are quite similar, but the blackbirds are less repetitive. Blackbirds can produce a shrill alarm call and sometimes a rapid rattling sound. The starling. Starlings have a short tail, a pointed head and triangular wings. At a distance they look black, but close up you'll see they have a glossy sheen of purples and greens. It's still very common in Britain, but the population has declined elsewhere, so it's on the red list. They're widespread across the UK, but they're most abundant in southern England. They're very common in the garden. Starlings are noisy, and they spend a lot of the year in flocks. They produce a truly unique song. You'll hear whistles, cracking notes and squawks, whines. The mix of all these sounds lasts a while too, sometimes more than a minute for each song. The Blue Tit the blue tit is a beautiful mix of blue, white, yellow and green and it's known to be a very attractive and one of the most recognisable garden visitors. They're common to hedgerows, in woodlands, parks and gardens. They're found across the whole of the UK with the exception of some Scottish islands. They have a short trilling song. This is two or three whistled notes led by a lower pitch trill and it varies in length. The house sparrow. Monitoring suggests a severe decline in the UK house sparrow population. Recently estimated as dropping by 71% between 1977 and 2008, while the decline in England continues. House sparrows can be found in the centre of cities, they can be found in farmland and the countryside. The house sparrow is quite noisy. They have an unsophisticated song. They make simple chirps, and they often sing for more than several minutes. They certainly put the effort in. The wren. The wren is a tiny brown bird. It's quite dumpy, almost rounded, with a fine bill. They can be found across the UK in woodland, farmland, moorland, heathland, and other habitats. It's the most common UK breeding bird, but it suffers declines during prolonged, cold winters. They make a variety of harsh sounds, like chirs and chatters and rattles. Here's some tips on learning to identify bird songs and bird calls. Choose somewhere easily accessible, but also try and set up somewhere where you're not too close to them. Hedgerows are obviously great, trees and bushes, but try not to get too close. Gardens and parks are great locations. If you're lucky enough to have an outdoor space, put up seed, nut and fat feeders. This will attract the birds to you, and they're likely to sing nearby. Listen out early morning and the hour before sunset. Listen then look. Focus on the most frequent calls you hear. Don't try to hear or identify all of them at once. It's much easier if you just deal with a few species. 
Once you've learned the most common sounds in two or three species, you'll find it becomes easier to differentiate them from the less common. Use mnemonics and rhymes. Make sure you're considering the rhythm, the tone and pitch of the sounds. For example, you could identify whether it's cheerful, whether it's mournful or even angry. Does it sound relaxed or in a rush to get through its tune? There's lots of apps and brilliant websites that you can use to identify them. So listen to recorded examples online and familiarize yourself with them. The most important thing to know about birds is how important they are to the ecosystem. Their seed dispersers, amongst lots of other things, they fulfill lots of different roles in the environment. More than 38 million birds have disappeared from the UK in the last 50 years. Humans have overrun the environment. There's intensive farming, oil pollution, transport. There's population growth. They face many threats. There's a climate crisis going on, and birds are obviously part of that. Fortunately, there's so many things that you can do to help. Give birds shelter. Make them a birdhouse so they have somewhere to nest and shelter from the elements. Provide fresh water in your garden. Invest in a bird bath or a shallow dish. Plant bird-friendly plants, like rowan or hawthorn. There's lots of great natural food sources and they could also help to provide shelter. You could make a bird feeding station, or you could buy one. Plant some wildflowers to attract insects that birds love to feed on. You could take part in the RSPB Big Garden Bird Watch. If you have cats, it's a good idea to buy them a collar with bells on. This means that the birds, they have more warning when the cats are approaching them. When I was young, I was lucky enough to wake up to birds in the morning. And I always said to myself, even as a really young girl, wherever I end up in life, I hope I can wake up every morning hearing birds. Thanks for watching today. If you have enjoyed the episode, please do give it a like and comment below if you have any questions. Also subscribe to my channel and hit that bell if you want to stay up to date with future episodes. Until next time.